My name is Stanislaw Robert Liberta, and this tutorial is all about how to use the MTuber 2 plugin from Motion VFX. So what exactly is the MTuber 2 plugin anyway? Well, it's a collection of templates, titles, animated icons, and more that are designed specifically for vloggers, YouTubers, and anyone who's a content creator for video online to make their videos look great. So we've got a lot to cover in this tutorial. Let's get started. After you purchase and install MTuber 2, you'll find the collection of title templates in the Titles and Generators tab of Final Cut Pro. Click on the MTuber 2 folder to see the collection of the different title templates available. You'll see different categories of templates included, but let's start with the backgrounds for now. MTuber 2 backgrounds are designed so you can use them as is, or you can also customize the colors and add text titles to them as well. To use any of the templates, it's as easy as grabbing onto one and dragging it into your timeline. To adjust the timing of the templates, grab the end of your template in your project and drag it. To customize the template, select it in your timeline and open your inspector, located in the top right corner of your screen. Inside the inspector, you'll see several different control parameters. and I'll adjust the background color gradient by clicking in the color wells and altering my colors. Let's take a look at another background. This time I'll choose gradient. With it selected in the timeline, I'll head over to the inspector and see what controls are available. Since each template is different from the other, templates may have different parameters. Let's adjust this one by changing the color to something a little bit more my aesthetic. Each time I want to change colors, I'll be sure to choose that particular color well and close the color picker when I'm done. To add a title to this, just drag a separate title and place it above your clip in the timeline. We'll work more with this later, but right now, let's take a look at one more background. This time, I'll choose the stripes background. Just as before, I want to put this at the end of my timeline. Except this time, I'll select it and click the E button on my keyboard, which will place it at the end of my project. Once more in the inspector, I'll change my colors to my liking. You may notice this little control icon in the canvas. This on-screen control lets us freely position the title wherever we need it, and I can rotate and scale it too. Ending screens are a great way to show your viewers previews of some of your other content you have online. You can preview any of the templates by hovering over them directly in the title tab so you can review each of them before deciding which one you want to put into your timeline. Each one of them is designed to be placed over footage and will gradually darken the background by default. I'll choose this one and drag it on top of the background we previously used in the last section and play it back. MTuber 2 gives you flexible options to adjust these two. Selecting it in the timeline, I'll navigate to the inspector where we can replace our text and the caption underneath it. MTuber's end screen templates have two different options to choose from, drop zones and solids. Near the top of the inspector controls is the drop zone well. Here you can drag any item from your library and place it in your drop zone to fill it. Let's look at another example. With the template selected and in my inspector, you can see the drop zone type dropdown. This control lets you choose freely between solids and drop zones. This way you can use YouTube end screens on top of your composition after upload. Choosing solid lets you specify a color for that solid. You can choose any color you'd like, but I'd recommend going with either white or black. Specifically in this template, we have the ability to customize and change our social media icons. Click the drop-down for different social media icon types. Use the text box to place your own information. The animated icons are easy to use. 
Just grab them from your media library and place them directly into your timeline. Using the on-screen controls, we can change the location, the scale, and rotation. In the inspector, we can turn on and off the outlines and the fill. With both the outline and the fill are specific color controls. If you're a content creator, chances are you probably have your own logo. And you've probably wondered in the past, how can I animate this logo and make it look really cool? The logo animations are easy to work with. I'll drag transform into my timeline and using the drop zone, I'll put in my logo. Use the logo size and pan controls if your logo or image is cut off. I'll change my text and near the bottom, I'll change the background controls. Make sure you check out all the animated logos and all their controls to see which one will work best for you. Next up are pointers. The pointers collection of templates are great for specifying specific information on the screen or pointing something out, or using the magnifying glass to highlight a certain area and even a few fun effects. They're especially great when you want to point out specific items on the screen or during presentations. The magnifying glass works by enlarging the focus area and dimming the background by default. To add a bit of animated effects, I'll drag a particles effect to when I say effects. Using the controls on screen and in the inspector, I'll make a few changes. To add a second copy of this item, I'll hold on to option alt and drag it over. Adjusting my timing, I'll have this duplicate start right after the last one. Next, I'll rotate it a bit and alter the colors just slightly. The social media icons are a great way to let your viewers know who you are and where to find you. There's a whole bunch to choose from, so let's take a look at a few of them. Like our pointers and icons, these are best used on top of footage or backgrounds. I'll start with this one called Avatar and place it on my footage. I have an on-screen control, but I think I'll leave it in place. Next, I'll add my photo to the drop zone, but we could also use video in here. We can change the icon type using this dropdown in the inspector. I'll just customize my text a bit. Another feature of these social media icon templates is each have the ability to be used as a lower third graphic or a title graphic. I'll change this title and change my text. And now I've created a matching title graphic to match my lower third. You may notice that all the templates in MTuber2 have an animation that starts and then ends off the screen. But what you may not know is that there's controls for those directly in the inspector. In the inspector are animate in and out on off controls. Turning this off means the title will stay visible until the last frame it's active on your timeline. To show off your channel's likes or subscribers, try out the achievement template. There's controls for light or dark mode, color controls for all animated items, and button control. Last but not least is the title section, a selection of different animated text blocks for your projects. I'll drag this search onto my timeline and use the controls to change my text. It's never been easier to make great content online and the tools from Motion VFX make that great content look its best. Again, my name is Stanislaw Robert Liberta and that's it for this lesson. 
But before I go, I want to remind you to subscribe to Motion VFX on YouTube and Instagram. That way you can keep up to date on all the best plugins and templates for Final Cut Pro 10 and Apple Motion. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.